Hello everybody, I'm Godot Guru, and today we're gonna add drivable cars to our GTA game in Godot. Okay, so start by going to the asset library and search for car. Then I want you to download this simple 3D car right here. Just download, and when it's finished, just install it. Then click OK. Now back in the 3D view, go up. And right here you'll have this cars folder, just open it. And you want to just drag this dodge car right here. And you can already just play the game. And you can control the brakes with the space button and move around with the arrows. Just like this. You have this really nice car, which you can also drift, but I'm just pretty bad. Yeah, like that. And the camera will also follow the direction, as you can see, now I'm going backwards. But even though this car looks nice, we still want to use our own models, so let's get out and use our own ones. Okay, so right click on the car and make it local and save it as a scene. I'm going to call it taxi. Then go down and open the scene it created. Now the car will be there, so let's go up and just reset the transform right here. Now go ahead and just select every single piece of the mesh, just like this, even the body itself, and just delete everything, because we're going to use our own model. Now go up and just drag the taxi into the scene. Make sure to then reset the transform. Rotate it to 180 on the Y and scale it up by 5, then make it local too, and just drag the mesh outside, and you can delete the route it created. Now let's go to side view to adjust the positions of everything, and make sure to disconnect the wheels from the car, like that. Now you can just quickly get them up to the height right here, and also just get the car a bit above them so it won't interfere. Now go up and select the actual wheels. I'm going to start with the two front ones, which are these ones. And just move them over to where the wheels are, just like that. And do the same for the back wheels. And now we can move the car mesh down, just about that. Now go to top view. Now we're going to parent every single wheel mesh with the wheel it presents. And I already saw that they're not order right. So take the first one and drag it below the second one. And then the third one and drag it below the fourth one, like that. And now take every single one and just parent it to the one just like that. So this goes to zero. Then this one goes to one. Then this one goes to two. And this one goes to 4. Now they're all parented correctly. The next thing we want to do is to adjust the collision shapes. So let's go to this one. Now this is the main body. So let's move it like this. And right here. Then we have the second one. And it's sort of like a peel shape. And we don't really want it. Then the third one is a square. And we do need it. So just adjust it accordingly, like that. And then with the back one, which is also a peel shape, but we do need it. So just go ahead and change the shape to a new box. And just adjust it again to fit the car. Should be something like that. Now go back to side view and make sure to correct the height. Now let's look at the car, and as you can see we have these outlines. Now it's not the most accurate thing in the world, but if you want then you can make it more accurate by just adding more collision shapes, it doesn't really matter. I just think that this is good enough. Then delete this label from the HUD because we don't really need the instructions. And back in the 3D view, set the name of the car to taxi and then open up the script on it. Now the original script is pretty good, but I changed it up a bit so the player can actually enter the car. So just select everything, 
with control A and then paste the code which you can find in the description. One thing you don't find is the player exit. So go back to the 3D view and right here make sure to just right click and add a new node and call it player exit like this. And I want you to just place it right there near the driver seat but just outside because this is where we're going to spawn the player when he exits the car. Then you can just save. And if you want to adjust the properties of this car, then you can just go up. And right here you have some sting variables and the engine force. You can also tweak the mass and even some other things. But one thing I'm going to do is to go to the collision and enable layers 5 right here. If you want to adjust the traction or the suspension or something, you can click on every single wheel. And right here, you have a bunch of settings for every single one, which are really nice. But I think that the default values from the asset are pretty good. Now you can just save, then go to your player scene, and we do have some changes to do right here. So then just right click and add an area 3D node set the name of it to car detector and set the collision layer to be only on 5 like this then add the collision shape I'm going to use a cylinder shape set the transform on the Y to 1 and set the radius of the shape to 1, 2 if you want you can also make it bigger this is just the minimum distance to get into the car then click back on the detector then open up the player script and again just select everything and paste the new modified code we made then save the script and in order to activate these two functions you need to click on the car detector and then go to the node and connect the body shape entered and then pick the shape entered one and connect and do the same for the shape exit just like that and now it's going to work and the last thing we need to do is to right click on the camera and add the canvas layer and then add the label inside of it and as you can see right here I just call it car indicator so just copy and paste it in the name then go to 2d view and I'll just center it on the screen like this in the, and in the inspector I'm going to set the text to drive dash e because this is the button I'm going to use to drive and this is pretty small so let's add a new label settings and in the font set the size to something like 40 and it will make it bigger like this then you can just save and like I said we have this drive action so make sure to go into the project settings and in the input map add a new action right here and just call it enter it's not drive because we're also going to use it in the future for like entering buildings or whatever I don't really know then add it and like I said I'm going to use the E key for this but you can also just use whatever you want then close and now if you get back to the scene then just delete the car we made last time and I'm just gonna go down and just add the taxi right here and now we can play the game and we are already in the car because I forgot some things the first thing is to go into the player and make sure to hide the car indicator because we don't want to see it at the start and then in the taxi go to the camera and disable current right here now we can save and run the game again and you'll start with the player and if you go to the car, then you can see it says that you can drive and if you leave it, then it will disappear. And now if you press E, then the character will disappear and you are now in the car. And you can drive this time with the normal movement keys. And it will work just like that. And I'm still a pretty bad driver in the, even in this car. And I just fell off. So at least it works, but my skills are not really there yet. Maybe later.
but this is kind of sad that we've got this in the city and this is the only working car so let's add all of the other cars too in order to do that just duplicate the taxi scene the first one is going to be the police car and then just open it up now the wheels and everything is the same so the only thing you need to change is just the mess of the actual body so go up and take the police car then in order to grab the mesh you'll want to enable editable children right here and get to the mesh and just copy it like this then you can delete it and then in the mesh we are using just right click and paste it and just like that you get your police car and as you can see we don't even have to adjust the collision shapes which is pretty nice but you do need to go up and rename it to police car and I also want to make it a bit quicker so let's set the engine force to something like 60 and now I'm just going to save it then the next one we are going to do the sedan so just duplicate the taxi again and call it sedan and open it up and do exactly the same thing just rename and it's going to be on the same force and again just grab the car right here editable children then copy the mesh delete the car again paste the mesh and you're done just like that the next one is the hatchback so let's just create it and I already renamed it and added the new mesh but as you can see the collision shapes don't really fit the new car and I don't really think that this back collision is really needed so let's just click on it and delete I'm just going to take this one and just stretch it back like this and it should be fine just like that then save and then the last one is going to be the station wagon and just like the hatchback it doesn't really need a rear collision but we do need to stretch it back even more so let's just select it and stretch it back like this and that's it all of the cars are done now let's get back to the world and right here we already have a taxi so we can just select and delete it but here let's just get the police car and delete it and instead we're going to go down and add a new police car like this and we're going to rotate it to 180 on the y and that's it we've got an actual car and, we, and i'm going to use it for every single car in the scene including these ones so i will meet you when i'm done and now that every single car is actually functional we can just get back into the game and if i go into the taxi then i can just drive it and just like that if i go i can actually interact with the cars which is so cool and let's say that i get out and as you can see it respawned me like this then i can just go to every single car and drive whichever one i want when they are close together like this it's a bit weird but it's in order to make sure that you can just drive both of them at the same time or whatever so let's drive this one i'm going to go out and yeah it's another car and you can also just actually interact with the cars even with the player like this which is also pretty cool i hope you like this video and that you enjoyed driving the cars like that and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next time Goodbye.